Good morning, it's Wednesday. I did a video at the beginning of the week to show you what trade ideas I had for this week. And now I'm going to give you an update. The trades have gone extremely well yet again. This is my four hour chart for gold. As you know, one of my favorite markets. Now, I predicted that we were forming a bear flag and that the market would continue to head lower. There was no point in trading the bear flag because that, that's just a consolidation pattern where the volatility decreases. Uh, the markets don't move very much and it's just not worth trying to make something out of nothing. It's better to wait for the pattern to complete and then take advantage of the move. And that's exactly what we did. We were selling on a break below the 2320 level and that just worked perfectly. As you can see, nice big red candle there. Let me zoom in on it. On yesterday's trade sheet that I give to my subscribers every morning at around 3 a.m. Uh, UK time, we had a sell, a break below 2320. So that was, as I'd explained in the video and in my analysis to my subscribers, that that was the, the trade that we had to do in gold on the completion of the flag pattern. There you go, sell below 2320. Now, my target was 2290. I didn't think we'd get there in a day, but we did. 2315, 2310, 2305, 2290. So we dropped a full 30 points in a day. Really worked beautifully, that flag pattern. Uh, we're out of the trade, we've taken a profit, and we'll now move on to the next trade opportunity, which I will, of course, post for my subscribers this morning. As you may remember from the video on Sunday, uh, and you can see from my trade sheet, we were buying the dollar on the move lower last week, hoping to see the dollar reverse recover this week. Well, that's worked really, really well. We had an opportunity to get in these levels, again, 107.25, 107.35 for the euro do believe just looking at my daily chart that we got to 107.35 yesterday in fact so even if you hadn't got that position on from last week but you definitely had a chance yesterday 107.35 that was actually the high of the day so that was perfect we've got my ultimate target down at 106.30 it looks like we are now down at 106.56 so we're well on the way and I think that the euro is in a bear trend versus the US dollar and I think that will continue so I'm happy running my short positions now, the British pound ran higher than I expected, I have to be honest. So we got stopped out of that short position, but the Aussie dollar and the New Zealand dollar worked really well. Let me show you. The Aussie dollar, to be fair, did run a few pips higher than I had expected. If you managed to hold on to the position, I'd managed to hold on to it myself. We're heading towards 64.60. Where is my target? Um, 64.60 is my ultimate target. So that will give us 100 pips profit on the trade. We are four pips away as I speak to you by the time you watch the video. I would hope that that target has been hit. But I do think that this uh, market can continue lower as well. I'm quite bullish of the dollar, and I think that the Aussie will continue to sink. I had a short sell in the New Zealand versus the US dollar. 59.70, 59.90. Yes, indeed. Now, you see why I had that here. And it was just perfect. We hit the FIB levels. We hit the moving averages. By the way, I'm, I'm looking at the four-hour chart at the moment. This is the one that's working for me at this time. It's not the only time frame I look at, but right now, this is the one I'm focused on. The high for the week was 59.84. Yesterday's high was 59.79. So you had the perfect opportunity to get into that trade. Yesterday, we, we peaked at exactly the sell level. 58.70 is my target um, on the downside. That will give us at least 100 pips profit. We are up 58.72. We're two pips away. So again, perfect trades. We're bagging 100 pips on these trades in less than 24 hours. So that's 300 ticks in gold. That's at least 300 ticks in the short Euro, short Aussie, short New Zealand dollar trade. And that's not the only trade that was a winner. We had the E-mini S&P, a short sell at the four, sorry, 51.45, 51.55 area. The high for the week was 51.54. So we, again, we caught the exact high. You know that I do that all the time. Yesterday's high was 51.48. So again, you had a chance to get in on Tuesday if you were not already in the position. The market dropped significantly. We've dropped to 50, 50. So we dropped another full hundred points there. That's, that's a big profit in the E-mini S&P. You don't often see a hundred point move in the S&P. That's 2%. You don't often see 100 point moves in such a short period of time in the E-mini S&P. That's a 2% loss for the index yesterday. A big move to the downside, which of course you don't see many moves to the downside in the indices because we have been in such a strong bull trend for such a long time. But I have been predicting that a bear trend would develop in the, in the S&P. That's why I suggested a short position, despite the fact we're in a longer term bull trend. It has worked perfectly. Now, on the four hour chart, you can see that we do have some support around the 50, 50, 50, 40 area. So we could well see a strong bounce from here. We've bottomed out 
bang on the support level. So this again is working really, really well. We've got a trend line. We've got a confluence of FIB levels. We've got the 500 period moving average on the four hour chart. So there is a very good reason to suspect that the market will bounce from here. It could certainly be worth a long position. I would put a stop below 50, 25, I think would give us enough room. If we do bounce, we might get another sell opportunity around the 51, 40, 51, sorry, 51, 45, 51, 55 area. So those are the two big levels in the e-mini S&P right now. My sell level in the NASDAQ was not achieved. And actually in my report, I did say, I'm not sure if we're going to get to the sell level. I had it in 1850, 18150. I did say in the report, we probably wouldn't get there because I thought the markets were already going to turn. But the problem is I couldn't give you a lower entry point for a short position for the NASDAQ because there just wasn't a low risk opportunity. If I suggested selling it around 1790, we'd have had maybe a two or 300 point stop. That's not what I like to do. I like to have very tight stops. As you know, most of my trades are one to three, sometimes even one to four risk versus reward ratio. So, you know, when we win, we win big. And of course that didn't offer a low risk opportunity. So I had to wait to see if we would hit the level, even though I didn't think we would, but it didn't really matter because we shorted the S&P and took a big profit out of that one. Hey, I hope that's helped you if you're a subscriber. I hope you're happy with the profit that you've made this week. I'm probably going to ease off on the trade ideas because we're heading into the US non-farm payroll on Friday. There's no point in risking all those hips of profit that we've made at the, in the early part of the week. And with, with very little effort, really, let's face it, we've made some really nice, quick, big, easy money. I don't want to blow that on the days leading up to the US non-farm payroll number. And I certainly don't want to run a position over the US non-farm payroll number. You've got to know when to trade and you've got to know when to stay out of the market. Now, if you're not subscribed, what are you doing? Why are you not subscribed? You're missing out on hundreds of pips every week. Have a look in the description box. Click the link and sign up.